Moving forward now, I'm going to look at using quick buttons, and not only how they function, but how we can move them around the screen and reposition them to the location on our user interface that suits us better. In addition, I'm going to be looking at this audio file and how, well, from following on from previous tutorials when we looked at using markers, well, here I've included multiple markers to indicate various parts of this song, i.e. the verses and the choruses and the middle eight section. I am going to look at this further in the next tutorial, but I just wanted to glance at it here, in case you're wondering why I've got all those different markers indicated. OK, so before I get to that stage in the following tutorial, let me look once more at these tabs running across here, that allow me to click on them and open up a specific view. Now I'm revisiting this because I want you to be aware that various panels can be opened from different places within our user interface. And in fact, in many cases, that particular function is duplicated, i.e. there will be more than one quick button that allows you to open that particular view. For example, here with my spectroscope, you can see the tab, but also if I look at these buttons running across here, just above, then you'll notice the fourth one along is my spectroscope button. And even at this screen resolution, you can see that the icon, the button there, is exactly the same, indicating that it is in fact the same visual tool. So if I actually click on this fourth button along, then you'll see the spectroscope opens up, i.e. it becomes the tab or the panel that comes into focus. Now by clicking on here once more, this fourth button along, this doesn't actually take the spectroscope from focus and leave the tab there. Clicking on here once more, as you can see, actually removes it from view completely. That tab and its related panel is now removed. However, clicking it again brings it back into view. Once more, it comes into focus. I'll do it once more. I'll click this fourth button along, and now you'll notice it's been removed again. OK, so by clicking there, as we've just seen, we not only bring it into focus, but we also have it removed when we don't want to see it. OK, now if I move over to the right hand side of our user interface, to this strip of quick buttons running down here vertically, well by default anyway, they might be positioned somewhere different on your screen, dependent on the workspace that you've got set up. But that's what we're going to look at in a moment, how we can move quick buttons around so that they are located somewhere else on your screen that perhaps is more convenient to the way that you like to work. As I say, we'll look at that in a moment. For the present, let me just point out what we've got. You'll notice by running right down here that we have this section. And in fact, this section is a duplicated section. And it's a duplicate of all the buttons that we've seen running horizontally across there. We have exactly the same buttons. And indeed, if you look carefully, you'll notice that these buttons run in exactly the same order. Horizontally from left to right and vertically top to bottom. So you can see we've got a grouped panel of buttons that we can quickly access. And in fact, as we now see, in more than one place on our screen. So to reiterate, these buttons run in exactly the same order. If we notice the fourth one down here, this is the spectroscope. And the fourth one along on the duplicated section across the top horizontally, well, the fourth one along is also the spectroscope button. Therefore, by clicking it here, well, as we saw a few moments ago, the spectroscope now appears here and is the tab in focus. And therefore, if we come over here to these buttons horizontally, our copied versions, if I click on here now, well, as expected, the spectroscope is now removed from sight. So we can access the same tools at different places from within our screen. Now, if I just draw your attention to the buttons that do run across here horizontally, within this section, there are about 15 or 16 distinct buttons. If for some reason you can't see them all, it might be that you've got some of these buttons hidden away from within this grouped area. Now if you roll your mouse over the end here, where the grip is, and left click, then you can drag to the right, and as you do so, then you'll notice that some of these buttons, the ones at the far right hand side, now disappear from view. And as a result of this space saving function, you'll notice we've got a double ended arrow at the right hand side now. Which would mean if you clicked on it, then all the buttons that are hidden would be revealed for you to choose from. As I say, this is a space saving function. And as it is at the moment, I don't particularly need to do that at my screen resolution. But it's there should you need it. Therefore, what I'll do is I'll come back over here, left click once more on the grip, and this time dragging to the left, now reveals all the buttons within this grouped area. And then now, if I come over to the right hand side where all these buttons are situated vertically, 
Well, you can see we have the same gripper button at the top in this case. Now within this section we see nine different buttons and of course clicking on any of these will open up that particular function. As an example, I'm going to click on the top one and this will toggle the visibility of the tool window basic audio CD. You'll notice that when I do click on it, over at the far left of our screen and connected to the master section, you'll see that this tab and its related panel will open up over there. So keep your eye on it, I'll click it now and then by coming right over here to the left, well there you can see, my basic audio CD creation tool opens up. And as we've now become aware, by clicking the button once more, then that basic audio CD panel gets removed from sight. Thus allowing us to save some space when we don't actually need that particular function. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, if you don't want a particular collection of buttons to be situated in a particular place, and you want to relocate them, well, we can do. And this is how you do it. If you roll your mouse over the gripper, and I'll do it with this group of quick buttons, if you left click and then drag away from the location, then you can see that this collection of quick buttons moves away. So if I move them along here, for example, and then deselect, well, as you can see, that group of buttons now gets located there. As a consequence, of course, at the right hand side, where they originated from, that other grouped collection of quick buttons now gets moved to the top. Furthermore, if you don't want this group of tools to actually be here on the same row as all these other buttons, then you can move them and create a second row. And we do it by simply grabbing the gripper once more, left click, and then drag down. And automatically, you see, we create a new row. And if I therefore move them over to the left, then of course, that's where those buttons are now going to reside for as long as I need them there. I'll show you once more. I'll do the same thing with these buttons now left clicking there and then drag them over to our newly created second row of buttons. So if I place them there, I've now got those two groups which were a few moments ago running vertically at the right hand side. Well now of course we've repositioned them so that they run horizontally underneath all the other tools. Okay, so now that we've moved things around to suit us better, I'm going to leave this tutorial here and as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, in the next tutorial, I'm going to look further at the marker section and how we can quickly navigate between separate markers. So, I'll see you in a second or two.